the Goldilocks principle. I'm sure you're all familiar with the fairy tale of Goldilocks and the three bears, how a young impudent woman breaks into the home of three bears and she tastes from three bowls of porridge, one of which is too hot, one of which is too cold, and the third of which is just right. And she tries the three beds, one of which is too soft, one of which is too hard, and the third which is just right. This just right principle has become known as the Goldilocks principle. And it's a concept that's been applied and extended to a wide range of circumstances or conditions that are just right for something else to occur. There's an appeal to this principle in many disciplines, but the one which I am interested in today is cosmology. Within the solar system, the planet Earth orbits within the zone known as the Goldilocks zone, the ideal zone in which intelligent life can form, not too hot, not too cold, specifically the condition under which water occurs in a liquid state. Now, I happen to think that this is based on a very narrow understanding of what constitutes life and possibly even intelligent life, a very anthropocentric view, but which I suppose is inevitable. Nevertheless, it's true that we would not exist if the Earth were as much closer to or much further away from the Sun. When astronomers search the galaxy for other stars with planetary systems, they're most interested in this Goldilocks zone on the assumption that that's where life is most likely to occur. The same principle has been extended to the universe as a whole, particularly at least at one time by the English physicist Paul Davies, at one time the professor of physics at the University of Adelaide. He and others have argued that the conditions within this universe, mainly in terms of the laws of physics, the physical constants that operate here, especially things like the strength of the forces of gravity, the electromagnetic force, and the strong and weak nuclear force, as well as other physical constants, that these features of the universe in which we live make it just right for the emergence of intelligent life, such as ourselves. This idea is based on the belief that there is, in fact, a multitude of universes, the multiverse, as it's often called, some of which will have Goldilocks conditions, ideal for the emergence of intelligence life, and others which won't. To quote Paul Davies, observers arise only in those universes where, like Goldilocks porridge, things are by accident just right. Of course, as we are in fact aware, and to some degree at least intelligent, we happen to live in one of those universes. I think there's room in this speculative theory for many kinds, many different kinds of Goldilocks universes and many different kinds of intelligent life. We happen to be in this one. Of course, there are many people who will point to these ideal conditions and argue that there must be an intelligent mind behind such a design, that these conditions could not have arisen by chance. The multiverse hypothesis provides an alternative to this point of view. However, it must be pointed out that neither of these hypotheses is really provable or refutable. If the multiverse is indeed a reality, there's unlikely to be any way for communication to be established between these realities. I would argue that this is in fact true in principle and by definition, it's, it's built into the very concept of the multiverse. If communication could be established between our universe and another, that would simply mean that the universe is bigger and more complicated than we thought. We would, in fact, both be part of the same universe, which I guess is also okay. Maybe this is what multiverse would ultimately mean, a reality with many turns, which is what verse means, rather than just one turn. I suppose it may be possible to establish the reality or even maybe the necessity of the multiverse via mathematics, 
But that would certainly be beyond my comprehension, and I suspect that of 99.9999, at as many nines as you like, percent of the population. Furthermore, I, I think it would still require some kind of uh, empirical verification. And once again, would that not require some kind of interaction or communication between these universes? In which case, we're back, I think, to just one much bigger and more complicated universe. Similarly, if we were to discover some entity, intelligence, or committee that was responsible for designing and constructing our reality, they, it, would just become part of this bigger universe. They, it, would be no more divine than those who designed and built the Sydney Opera House, just technologically more advanced and with bigger hammers and nails.